Hey there, my name is Miss Moonlight and you're listening to the Scene World Podcast. Welcome everyone, it is the Scene World Podcast. My name is AJ and over there, sitting in the middle of the screen, is Jörg. Yes, hello. Hello. Um, in a minute, we will be talking. Actually, I won't be talking to anybody because I, uh, I, I, I had to call out sick on this one. I was, I believe, I may have been recovering from my second COVID shot and was not feeling well. Um, could be, could be, it could be, could be. I don't recall exactly what the reason was, but I had to, I had to sit this one out. Tronimal, I'm kind of sad that I sat this one out because, because we've been talking about talking to Tronimal for probably the entire time that we've been doing this podcast. Yes, uh, I've trying to get him since six yeah. years, and yeah, that was the day. Been... And actually, a couple of days later, after the interview was done, his audio equipment broke. So, <laughs> was just the perfect timing. Good, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, couldn't. So, Tronimo also yes. called your Gritter House. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So we'll be talking. The Game well, Boy well, message, magician. Yes. Yeah, and one of Jurg's personal quests to to get on the podcast will be happening shortly. Before that, we've got a few bits of news um, exactly to hit on, like we normally do. Right. Um, so let's start with um, uh, John Draper, also known as Captain Crunch, also calls himself Crunch Man. Also under... called lots of other things by lots of different people. Yeah, JD Crunch Man is his. A nickname on Instagram. You and he left a message there for the starters, so you can follow him at Instagram slash JD Crunchman. Is this a new thing? His Instagram? That's a new thing. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and he also is on Clubhouse, so he got up to the game and now. That's okay. pretty pretty okay. neat. Okay. Yeah, neat. I've I've heard some things about Clubhouse, but isn't it? Um... I feel like it was restrictive Clubhouse. It was only yes, certain... but since last week, it's also out on Android. So if you want, I can send you an invite. Yes, but it's I will. only it's only on Android in the US Google Play Store yet. Well, I am in the US and I have an Android. Obviously, so... obviously. So that will work fine. Yes. So I will send you an invite after this recording. Awesome sauce. I'm yeah. down with that squirrel. The only negative thing is. I need your phone number, which I already have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because people on the people on the uh, stores are like, I didn't invite. Here's my username, but and they're like, man, your username means nothing. You need mm -hmm. the mobile phone number because on Android it's done by SMS, and on um, on um, iOS it's done with iMessage. That is right. how it's right. Yeah, and it's right. matching those invites with the number, um, yeah, that you mm -hmm. use when you register. Which right. also right. means you have to write international with the plus sign. Otherwise, the numbers don't match and your account can't be validated. Which is a big problem for many Americans because many Americans write the number with one yeah. but not the plus sign in front yes for yes. some reason but that is not valid internationally well because we don't do yeah the plus sign is not a thing that we as americans deal with on a daily basis when we're just calling you know i can remember when we didn't have even have to do the area code now it's now you now you have like an area code per state and then they're everything else you know i remember when when your when your phone number was just like seven digits yeah Anyway, you know. anyway, so that is why why um, with with any invite, uh, Clubhouse is reminding. Please mm -hmm. remember, the number has to be exactly matching the way you signed it up for. And yes, since right. since it only works internationally if you write internationally, <laughs> then invite will never work otherwise. And right, you can't right. undo invites, so mm -hmm. that invite is lost forever. Right. Right, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, other news is also that um, the retro magazine, World Magazine, we discussed that name a couple of times, 
also got now the seventh issue in English edition because it's originally an Italian magazine. And it's out since five hours, actually. That's brand mm. news. Mm. And they also got an Instagram now. And, of course, their Instagram name is Retro Magazine World. Who would be surprised to hear that? Yes. Well, now some news from you, God, man. Yes, that's that. I am a man, a guy, man. Um, <laughs> a guy, man. The biggest news I got here, the most, the thing that is that I just found out about because it just happened a couple days ago, evidently, is that um, Hyperion Entertainment has just released Amiga OS 3.2 for all classic Amigas. Nice. Um, a, their official press release, which we will link to that way, uh, Hyperion put it is in. pleased to announce the immediate availability of OS 3.2 for 68K based Amigas. Uh, it comes packed with well over 100 new features, dozens of updates that cover nearly all Amiga, Amiga OS components, and a battery of bug fixes that will undoubtedly solidify the user experience. It is the result of more than two years of intense and relentless work from a team of over 60 people who have contributed to produce a new milestone in Amiga OS history. Uh, nice. It has no words to express its gratitude to the talented and resilient team for its impressive work uh, ethic. The most comprehensive version is available on CD-ROM, contains all the discs and Amiga OS Kickstart ROM sets for all Amiga machines ever produced, allowing users to install OS 3.2 on multiple different types of Amigas at once. So this is... And then digital machine type specific downloadable versions will follow. Now, here's a, so Hyperion, I don't know if people, I'm sure we talked about it. I mean, just last year, no, no, not last year, 2019, they released OS 314, which I am running on this here Amiga 500 behind me, um, which was a major improvement over the original 3.1. Um, but it's interesting because Hyperion is, they're also the ones that are releasing OS 4.1, the final version. And here's the 3.2 that is now available. Uh, and, and the feature list is just, it's a lot of like reaction GUI, uh, integration, um, built in ADF management, uh, help subsystem, Updated data types, which are nice. Um, inclusion and refinement of all the 314 features. Um, but it, it, it does, uh, and, it, and it even works on low end, just plain 68,000 systems. And I mean, it's just, I'm looking at some, a couple the two screenshots that are available, and like there's a lot, a lot that's been added to it. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of jazzed about that. And I'm wondering, I'm curious if, because the 314 update required both the 314 OS as well as the um, Kickstart up update, which is the chip that, you know, physically lives in the computer. I'm wondering if the 3.2 requires that as well. Um, again, because, I'm sure there's a way to find out. Well, because a, a machine-specific stuff is not available yet um we'll Before. find out then yeah i guess it says the cd-rom version is currently available at your amiga dealer of choice although i can't find it at any of the amiga dealers that i'm looking at um, such as amiga on the lake and uh now right now i'm looking at simulant at uh uk um i don't see it listed in the shop so maybe they just haven't gotten up to They haven't gotten out around to Perhaps. updating, but um, Perhaps. yeah, it that's uh that that's cool. See, this is this is you know when we talk about the the, the thing with with Hyperion and Cloanto and arguing over who owns Omega. Yeah, it's but like but there's... we also reported like one of the episodes back that Cloanto and Hyperion actually. Um, found an agreement yes so yes. hyperion can continue with the right, amigo right. as development which is great yes i mean is, they they is. worked for over five years on this agreement or something yeah right like oh, wow yeah 
Yeah, it, as it we is. Say uh... many times, as we say many times when we were looking for a license for our ma magazine for the online version, that was a big issue. Like, yeah. yeah, you can get a permission from us, but be prepared to be sued from the other side. Yeah. That was a statement I get I got from both sides. So we're mm -hmm. like, nah, we will not go into that dangerous water. Um, yeah. Anyways, we found another solution, so that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this is this is good news because, as I said, one of the things that we were that that we were concerned about was was moving Amiga oh, into yeah. forward. Yes, yeah. right, and and that that you know some parties seemed to be more interested in just kind of keeping like you know yeah just stick with the old os and we're playing old games and we're not actually trying to you know move things forward at all whereas you know hyperion is actively still updating the classic amiga os that that your you know 68k based amiga is going to run so that's that's nice to know that that's still happening now uh, how, as far as the power pc amigas uh they still say that's the final version. So I don't know if that version of Amiga OS will continue to be updated. Mm. Hmm. But Perhaps it's like with Windows 10. It is the final Windows version, but it still receives updates also called Windows 10. Yeah, right. Did, did they just cancel the Windows 10X or something? They canceled the Windows 10X, yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was, that was a big deal. And then they were just like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. Yeah, so they are sticking now with the original plan. Windows 10 stays the last Windows, which is fine yeah. for me because it means less things break. Less things break. Tell that to my I mean, Windows because my Windows is breaking all over the damn place. I mean, I mean, I mean, of course there are bugs and stuff, but but I mean, you you remember like back in the day when the, every couple of years there was a new Windows version, you had to buy new hardware because mm -hmm. there were no drivers mm -hmm. your your games would stop working yeah mm -hmm. i mean i mean they can still stop work of course oh yeah? yes about the amount of like likelihood to that happen is decreased a lot because the um changes are not that dramatic yeah. most of the time yeah. so right. i mean i run a blog at nafcom.eu and if you look on that, Link I had there. to, I had to, um, I had to find new ways of getting uh, Dune 2000 from 1998 um, to, to I, run. I read, I read that blog. Yeah, because um, they made some changes that broke the fixes that I applied. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, I still got um, Wing Commander 4 to run. And as you might know, it was originally a DOS game, which was later on as mm -hmm. also released on a DVD with better video quality for right. this cutscenes right. Right. Uh, for Windows 95. And I actually found out in 2010, somebody released an installer to make it compatible with Windows 7. Mm. And this Windows 7 installer also works on Windows 10. So, hey. Nice. Wow. Nice. Wow. So, um... I was like, okay, I don't need a Windows 10 fix. I can just use the Windows 7 fix, and that's mm. just fine. So the likelihood, likelihood of breaking things is smaller, despite it can still happen. Well, and you, talking... you and I will talk about after after this uh, after we finish recording this. You and I will have a small chat about about an issue I'm having on my Windows installation. Ooh, okay. Anyway, um, talking about breaking things, um, the a book, the Atari Bit Biter User Club. A book, um, as we mentioned last year in our news section, the new management was trying to make it more international. Mm -hmm. So now they also posted the news and also have an English version of the status on their German homepage. Hmm. And unfortunately, this is already a month old, April 18th, um, from Vintage is. Um, Vintage it's is new old. New old, exactly. But um, it was originally also put on their homepage and it's still there. And it was written there that they planned since a while to renew the homepage, but they didn't. But now they have to because mm. 
the AppBook web server has been hacked and infected by malware. It's a, actually such a bad infection that they immediately took down the web server entirely and decided to um, to make a static page now yeah. Um, yeah. until that. And that's a month ago and the status didn't update yet. Um, they found it out by somebody who tried a couple of times to register and f they found out that the register form wouldn't send any email out to them. So the new user, new, new user could never register to the club. And they found out that it's because of the malware infection. And that was right. pretty deep. Um, they also wrote that um, they decided to make a new forum. But the old data is not lost. They may have a backup of that. And the old forum will go back online, but only at read only. Okay. So the new okay. forum will be um, will be a new system. And um, they also said that no content has been lost because that's also part of the um, of the uh, uh, backup. But yes. they also said that they anyway had to do a new page because of the GD. Um, well. I always forget how it's how it's um, appreciated in English, but um, it's called yeah, it's called the date the general data protection law yes. in Europe, and they also have to update the homepage for that anyway. So yeah, now the new homepage is coming a bit quicker than anticipated originally. Okay, and cool, anyway. Cool. If you go to their homepage, you can find that static page with the update. So they are pretty open and really had um, a lot of details in it. And at the Vintage is the new old homepage. Somebody all, already wrote a comment like, it's still down, that's embarrassing. New leaders seem to not care. Well, who doesn't who doesn't love the retro community? Yeah. There's yeah. all but there's all always, always somebody always who, who who hits mud on you if you're yep. already down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, um so that would basically be all my news for my That's myself. all I got. That's all I had. Wow, pretty extensive here. Yeah. Eighteen yeah. minutes news section. That's one of our longer ones. Okay. So Back to Game Boy music. Yes, Let's to Tronimal. And I'm going to go and, and I guess, probably be ill um, mm. back in, in the past. Not, not right now, just when we do the interview. Good, I'll because be, you don't look ill to me. Yeah, no, I, I feel great. But, but when we were doing the interview, I was probably running 102 fever. So. Who, knows? Who knows? Yes, yes. Okay, so there we go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today, we having another guest and this time it's a Game Boy live musician. It's Jörg Ritterhaus, a.k.a. Tronimal. Hello, Jörg. Nice Hi. to meet you. Yeah, thanks for having me here. No problem. At least, at least today I don't, I don't have to figure out how to pronounce your name because it's the same <laughs> first name I have, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> yes, nice. Um, so... You you are I would say you are the most known live musician on the Game Boy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh yeah, that might be right for Germany. Maybe also this could be Triac, me, or um, yeah, it should be one of one of us. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the thing I, I've learned about you a couple of years ago, you actually did this live acting. Um, with with the Game Boy as your main income for many many years, actually. Yeah, it was 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 uh, what was my um, main job. Yes. Wow! Wow! But I didn't earn a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard. I heard. Well, um, so so let's start a bit with history. How did you get involved with the Game Boy in the first place, and and electronics and stuff? How did that happen for you? So, yeah, of course, I was um, playing Game Boy as a child because I was born uh, in 83. So uh, I was pretty hyped when the Game Boy came out. 
Um, so I got a Game Boy. I had to choose one console for me. My parents didn't allow more than one console. So I choose the Game Boy because uh, it's portable. And yeah, as uh, everybody, you stop playing someday when you're a teenager and you start drinking and uh, <laughs> I don't know, skating, going out and stuff. And uh, but I came back to electronic music when I was around, um, I think, 14 or 15 years old. I started playing bass guitar when I was around 13 years and then I came to electronic music. And uh, then a few years uh, went by where I used a uh, Yamaha 16 bit sampler and uh, a small drum machine and my bass guitar to make music. Um, and then my uh, cousin came around, he's uh, making music, music also. And he told me um, over via MySpace, back in the MySpace days, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's possible to make music with the Game Boy. Uh, the funniest thing was uh, I didn't see my cousin for around six years before. So we met through MySpace. We found us through MySpace again. Um, that was really weird. And he told me this uh, 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 in the chat and I didn't believe him. I was like, yeah, yeah, I have to work. Uh, shut up, <laughs> go away, <laughs> leave me alone. And he was, um, yeah, he was texting me again and again the same message, like, yeah, it works, uh, it's done. There's a band. Um, he, he saw an American band. I think it was like, I, I don't remember the name right now. It was a, it was a, a, like a duo, a girl and a boy doing chip tune music, and uh, yeah. After he texted me for around half an hour, I was like, okay, I think you're serious. So send me a link. And yeah, he showed me this band and I was like, okay, I don't like the music because it wasn't my style. But uh, yeah, the instruments are pretty, pretty crazy. And I was really, I was really um, into Game Boy when I was a child and he knew that. So that's why he texted me in the first place. And uh, yeah, I took a look into it like two days or something, just how it works. And then I started to order stuff to make it myself. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I started kind of a week after that, and um, I I completely uh, stopped my main project at that time. There's a finished album I, that never came out because of that, <laughs> and that was in um, I think in 2008. So start of 2008. So like 13 years now. Wow. Maybe it was, I don't know if it was February or March, but it was around this time. Um, and yeah, then it just, it took over. Yeah, <laughs> I got uh, two, two software solutions for the Game Boy and uh, yeah, just, uh, it just changed my whole music career, I would say. So it, it took everything else away. <laughs> I stopped everything. <laughs> So, so you had a you had a music career before the Game Boy. Yeah, I played in several bands, and I uh, did um, uh, I did the sampling music, and I was connected to the breakbeat and hip hop scene. Also, uh, released um, an LP, even, uh, and then I had a solo album in the making, like electronica genre, so influenced by breakbeat and hip hop, but uh, without lyrics and stuff. Instrumental album. And yeah, that never came out. I still have it on my on my um, hard drive. I listened to it like half a year ago or something because I'm thinking about um, a best of album from the first 10 years I made music. Um, so to get two uh, songs from every album and include it. And then I stumbled upon like old band things. And of course, my old album that never got released. <laughs> so I re-listened. That's wow. pretty funny. Yeah. Wow. I also uh, remade song for my next album, so wow. uh, I have one of my very first solo songs. Um, Impressive, like for the Game Boy now. <laughs> Impressive, yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing is, you know, for me, break, break dance. I I only I only recall the game on the Commodore 64 by Epix. That is what I connected to, you know. Yeah. This early 80s game. <laughs> so um, it's it's um, impressive. So um, the thing is, on on the first day I met you, I think it was Gamescom. Some games comes back. You were like, hey, by the way, I have this Game Boy album that I uh, sell uh, like. 50 units limited edition. 
Ah, you you uh, talking about the cartridge release? Right, the cartridge so, release. So not yeah, the yeah, CDs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that that was limited to a uh, hundred copies. Hundred copies. Yeah, okay, I, think I, it, I remember. I think wrong. it was okay. uh, the. Um, I think this came out two thousand sixteen. Could be. Uh, could be. If I remember right. Wow, five years already. All right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Still one of my favorite um, albums. Yeah. I'm still I, proud that I managed to do it because I'm not I'm not really a developer and um, this is not like using just using a software because I had to do stuff in assembly uh, to get that to work and luckily I had some tools to help me but I still had to do some coding and I was like and now it wouldn't be that hard for me but because I did it I did it before and that, it was a little bit scary <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. I, I I don't know if you recall but. Um, a couple of weeks later, I, I liked it so much, I actually bought the CD version from your online store. Yeah. And actually, you are the reason I got I got um, a, C a CD player, a oh, portable okay. CD player, <laughs> a CD man, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and I was like, oh, my God, they are still made nowadays. It's impressive, you know? Yeah. So, like, wow, you know? And, and, of course, and, of course, when you sit there with a CD man in a tram and... Uh, the kids are looking at you funny, like, what's that <laughs> device, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, usually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually the people um, start buying um, cassette players again because of my releases and not so much CD players. So that's kind of mm -hmm. funny because um, that happened to me uh, like a few times that people text me like, oh, I got your tape. I want to have your tape because I made two tape releases and... Uh, yeah. I don't have a I don't have a record uh, a tape player, right. so uh, yeah. But CDs, yeah, most of the people can can somehow play CDs at least in their car. A few a few people came to me and said, "I only listen to your music in my car from the, the original <laughs> CDs because I still have a CD player in my car, but but not in my house or in my flat or something like that." And and one thing I learned um, for for Walkmans, you know, they are yeah. not called Walkmans anymore. They are called USB cassette capture devices, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so of course that USB port I never use, you know. <laughs> Why would I need that? I only need the cassette playing function. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a um, tape, uh, uh, four track tape recorder back in the days, wow. but I gave it to a friend who has um, actually has a, a small band project with his son, and they needed to record. And wow. he's, he's, uh, he has a second-hand record store, so he's pretty much into old technique also. So I was like, here, take my uh, four-track recorder, and I have a digital one. That's that's fine. And then when I started to make tapes, I was really like, ah, shit, why did I give it away? I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it and I asked him I asked him in the store, and, and his wife was, was working, and she tell, told me, like, yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, uh, you can have it again. Uh, you can have it back. And then he was shouting from the back, like, no, 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 we need it. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I bought a really good tape tech to to record my, my tapes. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, now I wonder, um, how did you even get the idea to to make that as your primary income, your main job, to be live on stage playing on a Game Boy? I mean, you said at the beginning it didn't earn you a lot, so yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's just like yeah, if you like something to do something, you, I think you should try out to to make it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and there's one thing is pretty cool in, in Germany if you want to make your own business you will get support for two years so um, if I wouldn't make any money in a month I could still pay my rent so, nice. for two years yeah for nice. two years so that was the thing of course that's like um, yeah you can do it even if you fail you won't have any issues yeah, so you can try it out. And some months were, were okay, and some other months were like totally shitty. Yeah, because uh, in the summer you play more often. If you have a new album, you sell much more merchandise than if you didn't do anything for half a year or a year. So that's that pretty much changes your income a lot. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, some months like Gamescom month is really really good. And wise, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean. I saw you, of course, on the retro 
um, on the retro stage yeah. in the retro area. But I guess where you really made your your money was when you played um, outside, yeah. outdoors, yeah. in the main areas, you know. And and I I I mean, you have you have videos. There are videos of you where like people that are too young to even know what a Game Boy is, they were totally dancing to your music. Like, oh my God, what shit is that? That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's incredible, you know? Yeah, street, street Geeks is much fun because uh, it's it's really, it shocks people kind of because one thing is you have the Game Boy and the second thing is like, what the fuck, you, you are there without any, uh, any electrical connection or something. So you have to, Everything has to work with batteries. And then you have the weirdest setup you can imagine. <laughs> and then, yeah, the sound is pretty much, um, you will recognize it yeah, if you know it. And even not, then you think, okay, something special is going on. So yeah, people, um, outside people, people party very hard. And uh, yeah, you can, of course you can sell CDs if you uh, own a, if you run a business, you're allowed to sell the CDs outside. and. Uh, it's not so much money that you get like for playing like the usual street musician, but mm -hmm. people buy your stuff, people buy your merchandise to to support you. The first year I was there, we only played with a with a hat lying on the street, and I went there with a, with a good friend um, who also does uh, game of music, and we didn't go inside. We just uh, we just were outside. I think it was like 2012 or something, and um, we bought a speaker that we can use with batteries. And we lent the money, <laughs> I think, from my parents or something. So we lent like three, 300 euros or mark. I don't remember what it was in 2012. I think it was euros. Yeah, uh, um, euro, you were started in the year 2001. Oh, okay. That's long ago. Yeah. Long, okay. Long so ago. we lent 300 uh, euros. And then it was like, okay, let's play one day. Maybe we can make a little bit money back. And maybe we can afford to go there the next day again so we can buy the ticket for the train and we played and it's really hard to uh, to know what you get when you just get coins so to to imagine how much it is at, at the end and it was like we thought it was like 15 euros we made or something and i went home and i counted it and it was like 100 and, and and a bit and i just called my friend and said let's go tomorrow again let's buy a ticket for 30 euros and let's play the whole day and we really made in two days we made the speaker back in we we, we got the money back in to buy the speaker so i could wow. give the money back and it was like okay we have to play more street gigs <laughs> of course because it's fun and uh, yeah you can you can you can earn some money especially when you have like uh, such an event that has some retro or gaming connection yeah i i also played in the streets of of my hometown and i made like two euros in 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 an hour or something yeah because yeah, nobody cares. can't appreciate it yeah. i guess on but this, if you on go this. to like the retro fairs or the game conventions or something like that that works out kind of yeah for if you don't want to live from it, that, that would that would totally be worth it like i, I wonder how, how did that work so you just bought a day ticket or did Gamescom actually book you? Um, they they asked me a year before. Wow! But I but I was I think I was in Italy in, in Italy that year, yeah. so I, I had to cancel. And then uh, the second year, so the year that I was actually there for the first time, uh, I asked them, like, can I come? And they were like, I I don't know who it was. Maybe it was uh, the Return magazine. That asked me, and they were like, "No, we don't have a um, have a booth this uh, this uh, this year." So they canceled. I canceled the year before, and then I, they canceled. And then I was like, "Okay, let's go down to play outside." Yeah. Oh, that is and, how it uh, happened. Okay. Yeah, and the next year I was in, uh, invited again, but I had so much fun outside that I said, "No, I come, but I only stay outside." <laughs> and it took like. Two or three years uh, till I really, uh, till I said like, okay, I will come and, and play inside. And now I always do both, and I always um, talk to the the organizing uh, people like, please let me play um, until uh, 
15 o'clock or something like that so that I have enough time to build up my setup uh, outside for the people that come out that leave them the mm, convention area that I can still play there so that I don't have any time issues with wow. outside and playing outside and inside so. so so at which point did you did you notice that you made a name out of yourself and people started recognizing you I mean, you are, you are a brand nowadays. You I know? don't know. When, when, when I say, when I saw Tronim, Tronimal, they're like, oh, no, he's, he's amazing. He's great. Oh, my God. You know? Yes, sometimes weird stuff happens, kind of. I'm not that big. But if you are into gamer music, you might know me in Germany, at least. Uh, and I like le last week I I wrote to somebody because of uh, Game Boy software, uh, special Game Boy software, and like even Game Boy hardware cartridge that is a bit special. And he was like, he went to my profile after the message, and then he was like, Oh, Tronimo, oh thanks, yeah, I did, I, I um, wouldn't know all this without your help because I made these Game Boy software lists and. Uh, all of that stuff and so wow. uh, he was really grateful and <laughs> i just uh, talked to him like 10 minutes before we started to meet here wow <clears throat> yeah i mean i mean the thing is the thing is i don't know so much about game boy music i only know two 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 people that would be you and melted moon which is yeah. a group yeah. for game boy music that's that that's all i know um and um, and I I haven't heard much about Melted Moon in the last years, yeah, um, but true. but you but you 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 are always a topic in a way you know. Yeah, I was a bit quiet like the last two years as well because of some things like uh, yeah moving home and stuff like that. Um, and there's the pandemic that also makes yeah. it harder. But I, but I would say like we are in Germany we are like around 10 to 20 active gamer musicians, and. Yeah, I, I um, made a lot of stuff with WorldKit in the last three or four years. So um, he, he really did some great stuff. And we always like feature us on the on the other person's album and stuff. <laughs> so maybe you have heard uh, of him as well, because I, I also took him to the Gamescom the last time and the, the year before. And the year before, actually, his very first gig ever was on the gamescom stage <laughs> on the vector area stage yeah right? yeah, <laughs> yeah i remember that i invited bit. him I that bit, you know? <laughs> and he was like three days in a, in a row he was there and the first day he was like so nervous he didn't move at all so he was just like playing like a few songs and you could see like he nervous uh, how nervous he was and then like three days after that he was like dancing on stage <laughs> and he was so happy that was so cool because i think it's really hard when when you have like such a such a setup and such a gig and this is the first gig ever i think that's really 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 hard thing to do so yeah and there, there are a few people that are active but it's like um we are spread over over germany it's not like that we are all in the same place or something like that so yeah depends a bit where you are if you are in the east you you might know triag and if you are in like the west then you might know me <laughs> like me for example yeah. yeah um you mentioned your special setup a couple of times so you are not using a normal regular game boy classic you're you have modified it i guess uh depends on what i do yeah i have some modified units i i also uh, do a little bit of streaming because i wanted to do uh, online workshops at the beginning so i made some vga game boys i also built some crazy stuff i built a uh, a uh, MIDI guitar with a Game Boy and a MIDI keyboard with a Game Boy and I built some Game Boy drums in the past and I want to redo this because I also built a Game Boy talk box so I can do a band project wow. with always Game Boys. That's the future <laughs> plan. I, I usually wanted to start this uh, I think in 2019 but then so much stuff happened and I didn't have the money to, to make it all at once so it's like it's a very slow process, but I have the guitar now and the piano and the talk box, so it's just the drums that are missing, but I can't use it alone. But usually I play with a pretty normal Game Boy. They are slightly modified, uh, modified but it's not important or necessary at all. 
so, all you need is a flash cartridge. Yeah, that's that's pretty important. <laughs> so so what Sega has with the Sega Sound Team would be probably soon Tronimal's Game Boy Band. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, uh, but it was it will take a while. <laughs> um, but but I saw one of the modifications you usually do at, at Melted Moon also is um, a Game Boy with audio outputs, aud audio jacks. So you can, ah, you mean you can the put RCA. it an amplifier. Yeah, RCA jacks. I, I just modified the headphone jack so I don't uh, have to, I, I do not have to destroy like the shell. Ah, so yeah, but it's the same mod. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, clearer and louder output. You can also... Um, uh, make like the the bus cutoff uh, reduce the bus cutoff from the Game Boy and make something that is a little bit of background noise is filtered. So just by um, changing some caps capacitors like in the hardware. So but that's not it's not important. You can you can make music without all of it. You don't have to do it. Uh, you can just you use the headphone jack. Yeah, no problem. It's just a little bit um, quiet. So yeah, it's maybe not the best for uh, for co live concerts, but it wouldn't wouldn't be a huge deal. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So is so all you try to um, to keep your Game Boys as unmodified as possible, basically. Ah, some of them. I have a lot. So uh, <laughs> so if if I look here right in front of me, I'm sitting some Game Boys that I really that I use, and that's not like on my desk or something. So there is like one has a new IPS display, another one has like a, a backlight and all the sound mods you can imagine. And there's uh, VGA modded stuff. But I also collect every revision from the Game Boy, so I can test when I homebrew stuff. So um, the Game Boy that was actually produced in 1998 had a CPU number 01. And the latest ones that were the colored shells, not the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Pocket, no, the regular Game Boys, that had the CPU number 08. So there are eight, at least eight different models. Uh, and so I collected them all. And I finally, today, the oldest one, the CPU uh, 01 and 02, arrived from Japan. I, I finally found them after years of searching. <laughs> uh, so now I can test everything. Because uh, the 03 model is known for having sound bugs. So even the official games, uh, the sound doesn't play back very well. So wow. it was like very short on the market because of that issue. So uh, you won't find that very often. And the other ones only were only produced in Japan. So you won't, won't find it here on the flea market or something like that usually. I once had, um, had an interview with Stello Duzis and he told me about exactly this issue. He said like at back in the 90s, they didn't know. And um, he was basically doing music for the Game Boy Color. And yeah. he said, like, he sent it into the company for review and then figured out, like, it sounded totally wrong compared to yeah. his Game Boy. So he was totally frightened and scared. And uh, so he, he told me about this. And, and Nintendo or something, um, the documentation gave no info whatsoever about those differences. No, absolutely not. It's, the, all the documentations, uh, documentations nowadays are kind of online. So you can see it and you can like think what it might have been back in the days because you you won't get any uh, everything. So you you might only have one document and not everything. And I know I know also know people from that uh, developed back in the days. And there's one German developer from Munich that told me exactly the same thing. Like they told him, please test this on the DMG 03 or 04 model or whatever. And he was like, okay, but I don't have it. How should I test it? <laughs> that was his issue. He knew about the problem, but he couldn't test it. So he couldn't, he couldn't check if it's working or not. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So, and of course, the Game Boy Color is a totally different thing because the processor is faster. So if you run into sound problems because of the processing power, you won't recognize this on a Game Boy Color. Yeah. Wow. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the what well, what I know is there are some games for the Game Boy that don't work on 
on um, the Game Boy Player and don't work on the Game Boy Advance. For example, one game would be Road Rash, and if you if you put the Game Boy version of Road Rash in the Game Boy Advance, it will crash. Oh, okay. I ne I never figured that out. Uh, I know I knew a few problems with with uh, compatibility, but not um, that that some things crash. Uh, that I didn't know that. Uh, I knew it, and that's exactly the reason why I bought the game. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's one of, I guess it's one of two games on the Game Boy that doesn't work in the Game Boy Advance. I don't know if I have it. I have to look it, uh, look it and out. And that later. is exactly why I bought it, you know. And the seller um, 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 didn't know about this, you know, and he was like, yeah, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. And, you know, I told him, like, yeah, you know, this is one of two games that doesn't run <laughs> in the Game Boy Advance. So perhaps you shouldn't have written in the a PayPal auction, uh, in the eBay auction, <laughs> yeah. that it's compatible with the Game Boy Advance because that game is known to crash. And he was like, ah, oh, okay, thanks for the information. <laughs> I will change that for the next units I have. Um, so I wonder, how do you go about when you create a musical piece, let's say for your album or something, what's the normal creative process you go? I guess it's different from composing normal music. Yeah, that that's that's the case, of course. Uh, the second thing is like uh, I have to like um, I have to um, think about if I want to do just a song for a CD later or something, or if I have to uh, if I want to do a song for an actual cartridge release, because cartridge release I have to program music on my PC and use assembly and whatever, and for uh, usual Game Boy song in, in my point of view, so that I compose it on the Game Boy itself. And then it's not um, not really compatible for cartridge release. It's in, the in theory it is, but you couldn't fit much on the cartridge because uh, it would take so much space compared to usual solutions that you might end up like Uh, creating the biggest cartridge that the Game Boy can read and you can only put like two songs on it. So wow. that's not that's nothing that I would um, would would do yeah, usually. But the normal way, if I do Game Boy music, I, I did a few other things, of course, as well. But if I do Game Boy music, I compose it on the Game Boy itself. And usually, what I use most of the time is a software called a Little Sound DJ. Okay. Um, I use other software as well, but this is what I what I mostly use, and uh, it's a tracker, so it's. I think everybody who did like music with old devices know, knows what the tracker is. So it's a tracker so um, uh, for the Game Boy and it's really powerful compared to what you could do back in the days. So you have lots of uh, effect commands that usually are not um, supported by the Game Boy hardware. So usually the hardware is just, it has four channels And you have like two pulse channels, one wave channel and a noise channel. And the wave channel can produce like custom waveforms that are made of uh, 32 steps or digits. And the noise channel can just make white noise. And the pulse channels only have four waveforms. And then you have like effects like volume start and the volume end kind of so like a little bit like an envelope. And you have like a vibrato and you have like sweep, which is like a pitch curve, but uh it's not really nice it's, it sounds really crackly because it's it doesn't really make a curve it really it would make a pixelated curve if you would imagine it this okay. in an audio uh, okay. waveform yeah uh, but this guy who made the little sound dj um software he's doing this since i think 2000 or 2001 and he's still developing it and the newest uh, update came two days ago Like, this guy's insane. So uh, he programmed everything, like, software-wise into it. So he made pitch commands. He made, like, a uh, new envelope style that you have, like, RDSR, uh, RDSR um, uh, volume control. He made, like, a sample function, which is kind of in it, but usually not used. He put so much effects, like, that you can use and that you don't have to think about it. And if you then go back to, like, say you want to make a card release or you want to make music for a Game Boy game, 
then you don't have all these effects. And then you have to really think about if you can actually recreate it without that software, some things work and some things are really helpful if you figure them out. So it really helped me to get to more limited programs to understand uh, sound design better. For example, if you have a pitch command, you can just write pitch it down like, I don't know, uh, a certain hex value. So pitch it down for uh, seven, four digits or something. But then you have to think about it like, okay, can I actually do this in a wave channel without having these um, these commands? And then you think like, yeah, if you write like, let's say 10 waveforms that are slightly altered and then play back them, uh, Play them back like right after the other then you can like draw these things and this helps you because then you have the tricks for the shittiest software on the market you can still use this stuff so you can you can <laughs> kind of abuse the hardware and you can make stuff that usually people think that is not possible even with the with the not so good software so that's what i uh, also did with uh, when i made atari vcs music i just made like the, I made all the songs in the highest speed possible so that I can do kind of pitch commands just by writing notes. Uh, like writing... Uh, no, the, the VCS, the 2600. Ah, okay. The, the, uh, yes, the, 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 right. the most shitty one that you can get for making right, music. Right, right. The Pokey was in the Atari ST, right? Uh, Pokey is like, uh, I think the uh, XL and I was called 400 or 800. Right. Yeah, eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before the before the ST. Before the ST, yeah. yeah. The older one, yeah. I have to I have to admit I always skipped Amiga and Atari, so I'm not an expert in this field. <laughs> I, I, I didn't use a lot of home computers because when I was like five or six year old, years old, my mother bought a IBM PC, a two uh, two eighty six. Wow. Yeah, 286 for she was a teacher, schools teacher, and she wanted to do some stuff for um, homework and for the um, actual, how's it called, these uh, things you have to write as a student, like uh, four times in a year or some these tests. Yeah. Uh. So she could prepare that stuff on the computer, and then she thought it was kind of cool to have it, like for these reasons. And of course, we as kids, we just uh, got this and played games and learned a little bit of basic programming. But that that's why I never used like the Commodore, or the Amiga or the, the the ST or something like that, because we had an IBM PC and then we bought a 368 and then we bought a Pentium and stuff like that. So I never ca really came to that. But I um, the first console I ever played was Atari 2600 because my grandfather was actually kind of collecting this stuff. And there are a lot of um, games that you can only play with two players. And uh, my grandmother wasn't much into gaming. So we always <laughs> called us, the grandchilds, like, would you come by and play against me because I can't wow. play alone? Okay. Uh, that's how I came, kind of came to gaming, yeah, ah. before I had my own console. That's yeah. that's very interesting because when I tell people that that my grandfather played games with me, people are like, "Why would an old man play games with you?" And now you tell me a similar story, so I'm yeah, not feeling alone anymore. Maybe he's not so old because I was so young. Yeah, because maybe it was like just fifty years or something, and that's not. That's not weird to me that a 50-year-old man plays computer games, <laughs> to be yeah, honest. Yeah, you know, back I know in a the lot 80s and 90s, mm, yeah, it I'm not sure. Yeah, it was I'm a bit different. I'm not sure if, if it was the most, uh, would, I would say, would, I'm not sure if that, happy had the, if that hobby had the best reputation. Yeah, that's true, yeah. There was not so many people in that age. But, yeah, it's, it's the only solution. You have to find another player. So, right. Yeah, who do you ask? The kids, of course, because they want to play. You, you won't ask, like, he won't ask my mother if she, she, if she was come play Atari. Yeah, of course, he would ask the kids. And yeah, that was kind of fun. And uh, I don't remember much of the games. I just remember one or two because I liked them pretty much. The rest is like, I don't know what games he had. I just know like two or three of them. Um, yeah, but when I thought about like making music, sometimes I want to make music on another system and not on the Game Boy, just to have a little bit, um, learn a bit new techniques and um, 
just make something different a little bit different for a short period of time and it was like okay what's the most shitty thing that you still like and that's the Atari 2600 of course because this, the sound chip is horrible um, you have two voices that is not that bad but it's it's somehow it's um, it's the video processor and audio processor in one unit and it's so limit limited that you usually without tricks don't have a have a note scale um, you just have like you might have a c and then usually there would come cis and then d and this and this yeah and then you have like maybe you have an f but it's detuned as hell so yeah. you if you want to create a song that is actually like a little bit of harmonic sound wise you really have to make lists and think about which uh, notes actually go together because they are so detuned and I really I wrote down so many lists like okay have a, how many C's are actually there that are not so hardly detuned and so what is harmonic to C and let's see if there are actually if there is even a note there were some I, I did this for every note yeah uh, one list for every note so there were some notes that didn't have a single harmonic tone on the whole console wow. to play with yeah, so uh, usually my plan was to make one song with every note. So you would have like, if you just take the full notes, you would have seven songs. Yeah, and no, it doesn't work out. You can't do it because there is nothing. You you, you can just do then one bass note and drums. You you can't find any anything that's harmonic. But then I think three or four years ago, um, or maybe it's even five years ago, uh, Andre Wichmann came out with a TIA tracker, so he made a tracker for the VCS. Before that, you had to code everything in, in assembly. Um, I did that, then the tracker came out, and then one year after that, Utz came with a tracker, and he comes from the one-bit spectrum scene, uh, one-bit beeper music spectrum scene, wow. and he rewrote everything so that the sound is not generated um, in the usual way anymore more it's more generated like in the one bit beeper uh, scene so it is everything is recalculated by the processor so you actually can play every note wow that's yeah? impressive so, that's but impressive. that thing takes so much processor processing power that you can't run can't run a game uh, beside that so you can just use it for music then you can't do it like for a homebrew title or something and tia tracker is still good for homebrew stuff so, because of the resources it takes, I guess. Yeah, it's so it, it takes so much power from the from the processor because it has to recalculate everything. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Was that not means how it's supposed to be. <laughs> that means one of your next albums has to be for the PC speaker. Uh, I did a I did a ZX Spectrum beeper album in the past. But not PC. No, not beeper. PC. No, not PC beeper. I really want to do a Sound Blaster album. Oh. That's a 16 album. And uh, actually, um, a friend of mine, you might know him, he uh, calls himself a uh, Sitzspieler. Yes, of course. He recorded course. a lot of stuff for Chris Hülsbeck for, from the course. original hardware. Yeah, sure. And he really gifted me a PC with Soundplus 16. Wow. All I need to get is like, I need to set up my, um, my studio again because I moved home, as I told you, like I have nothing to work on like like I'm used to. And I have to get an old mouse again that's compatible to this PC because I don't have a mouse for it. I just have the keyboard and I have a monitor, but I don't have a mouse. And I really want to have a mouse to control it because otherwise, otherwise uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, not for tracking music. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, hey, I mean, there are some prime examples. Think about Zach McCracken for the PC with the PC speaker. They even got the snoring sound of the intro correct at the beginning. You can do a lot of stuff if you if you have the right tools and if you really understand how this works. There are there are people that did um, eight voices or sixteen voices through a ZX Spectrum B per speaker. Yeah, because they know how how it's calculated and they know how the how the insights works and they know how waveforms work yeah so they they used many tricks they explained it to me i kind of get it but i don't want to tell like the whole uh, thing but you can make so many if you understand the hardware and if you understand music 
as well. So if you have both these knowledges, you can you can make so, so great things um, and things that would never been possible in the past or that yeah, at least nobody thought it would be possible. Sometimes you can even make great things if you have no idea what you are doing. I mean, of I course. Mean, of I mean, course, I mean, yeah, we can. once we we once had a, had a phone interview with Rob Hubbard, and I asked him like, how did you get those clear digital samples out of the NAS for uh, Skate or Die 2? Ah, okay. And yeah. he said like, yeah, I just poked around the memory and looked for illegal app opcodes, and I found them, <laughs> and I found out they can be used for clearer digital uh, <laughs> sample playing uh, just by that. accident <laughs> he, he found uh, he found illegal app opcodes for better digital sound playing you know that was amazing and i mean that was 1990 so towards the end of the lifetime of the nas yeah yeah of course you have to know but you have at least to know how to look at uh, look these things up Uh, you have to have a little bit of knowledge for that as well. So you can't, you can't just, just not every hobbyist can do it. I think. Of course, if you listen to certain, certain old time composers, they make it sound like it was nothing. You know, oh, I just discovered a new thing by accident. It wasn't yeah. a big thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like the thing is, the 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 more you make the more you do work with these old consoles then uh, you you get used to it and some things like won't be hard for you but if you explain it to to a newcomer they think like what the fuck what, I, i would never do this or anything of this and i get it because w when i started it was like so many things were so confusing to me and now it's like all oh, it's like it's it, It seems like it was pretty self-explanatory, but it's not. True, it's, you, true. You have you have to you have to learn it, and you have to you have to you have, to, you have to just try things out. Of course, you can just try stuff, and maybe it, it will be great. Yeah, but if you want to like say write a new tracker that can do more than other trackers, you have to know what you do. Yeah, that would that wouldn't have an accident. Oops, I wrote a tracker. I just wanted to write a text file. No, that's not. <laughs> <how it works. laughs> that's a good but, one. That's a good one. But there are like there's so much software out today to do music for games or not for games. So just for the music or for games that you don't have to have like huge knowledge base to make music. No, it's too, it's super easy nowadays. You can just grab a, a software tracker, software tool to make music. That's not the problem. If you just want to do music, that's not the problem. If you want to code, that's a little bit of another thing. But even there, like at least in the Game Boy scene, there are, there are crazy tools out uh, now since two years or something. There's this GB Studio. This is just for rpgs it's like rpg maker what it's for pc it's like for the game boy so you don't have to have any knowledge you can just drop in bitmaps to, for graphics you don't have to worry about sprites or how you create a map a background map or something you can just you you don't have to have any knowledge to start and that's cool so you can like find the way into it like and if you are interested enough then you will um, yeah, you will catch a little bit more knowledge and yeah, get deeper into it and maybe get the next uh, crazy dude that uh, develops the next thing that everybody thought was impossible. <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, you have your special way of making music and people can can pick you out of many. Like, yeah, that's a typical Tronimo song, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have I, your, I would agree, your, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a really big part of this is that I don't like to make these happy sounding cheesy melodies. And that's the usual Game Boy thing people do. <laughs> so that's one no, big thing. That's, there's, exactly, there's more. that's exactly what Stello de Sous said in the interview. He said like all those musics from the Game Boys sounded like crap. And all those tools from the 90s were crap. So I just wrote a converter for the for the Amiga and later on for the PC yeah. and converted what I what I composed on the Amiga or the PC to Game Boy and that was it. He told me the exact same reason. He didn't want those crappy sounds from other Game Boy games. Yeah. You know? And um it's yeah, it's it's incredible, you know. And he would he who would who would think that nowadays one of his most known uh, releases is um 
ähm, ist The Happy Hippo. You know? ah, okay, das Geheimnis yeah. der Happy yeah, Hippo. Yeah, yeah. I, I on, on the Game yeah. Boy Color. Actually, uh, there is a huge Happy Hippo uh, painting in my kitchen. Really? Yeah, because my, my girlfriend's kind of a uh, huge Hippo fan. Wow. And we also have this game here twice because she has it in, uh, in, in box and I have, I have it as a single cartridge. Wow. So, yeah, I know this game very well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kinder Surprise Game, his yeah. most known work. Um, <laughs> It's incredible. It's, I wonder. It's kind of still, it's 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 still happy tunes, yeah. This game, but it's well made. It's well made. It's like boom. It's not like a typical game. It's yeah, has, and, and it has drums. How, how is it in English? It has oomph. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oomph, you know. Um, yeah. In German, we would say it has had schmackes. Or the booms. Booms. Schmackes, <laughs> booms. Yeah, oomph. Yeah, it's, it's like these old words from, from comics, like pow and... <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah, it's true, yeah. I, I wonder, speaking about cartridges, how did you get permission from Nintendo, if you can talk about it, to make your limited album 100 uh, units release? Oh, yeah, I told I told. Was it just it, like course. you send an email and the next day they said like, yes, of course? No, 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 it's not... It's, it's that easy and not that easy at the same time. So the problem is now um, there's a lot of homebrew release these days for the Game Boy. Really a lot compared to the years before. And um, these people don't ask at all. They don't ask Nintendo. And you can see it if you know the restrictions Nintendo makes if you really ask. Because I asked. <laughs> so it's this thing. They won't license it. So they won't allow you in the old-fashioned way to make it. But they say you can make an unlicensed game. You are allowed to do that. But then you have to make sure that you don't use our graphics. So you can't write the Game Boy logo on the side. You can't use the official Nintendo seal. You can't, say, you can't write the Nintendo logo on your box. And if you see all these homebrews that say Nintendo Game Boy, they have this original style, you know they haven't asked. And if it if it gets more and more and more, I, be, I really believe people will get in trouble in the future with this. So I don't think they have to pay like something, but I think they will be like stopped selling it in this way. Um, I asked and they told me like they can't give me permission. They have way too many requests for for everything. Yeah, but they can allow me Uh, to put it out if I don't use their stuff. So I wrote on the on the manual there's there's uh, I wrote not licensed by Nintendo, and I kept away all the logos. So the only logo that is still there because I at that time I couldn't I couldn't um, brick it or something is the Nintendo logo. At, if you uh, start the game. Because that is like the copy uh, protection from back in the exactly. days. Exactly. Yeah. But for the next release. It's there known is a, nowadays. It's known there, nowadays how it's done, right? It's uh, known. I saw a YouTube video where it explained how to work around that. I, I have a prototype here um, for for the next card release. I'm I'm doing one, but I can't tell you when it's finished because I don't know. It's of not course, it's it's course, not a secret. I just don't know when it's finished. Okay, sure. And it's a split release together with Wallkid, so with a friend. Um, and um, it would. It will be a bit more expensive if I do it this way, but I really want to do it. So I can replace the Nintendo logo with anything I want. So it's loaded into the memory and then it's replaced, kind exactly. of. That's, that's exactly. how they do it. Exactly. And um, it was also done back in the days because there's a, there's a company called Sachen from Korea, I think. I don't, I don't never know where. I've never heard of them. But... And they even sold, uh, sold their games That all every game is a four in one, and they sold them, I think, even at Lidl back in the days. So they were sold officially, but they were not licensed. And they had this in the back in the 90s, they had the uh, the Nintendo logo replaced with a Sachen logo, so they knew how to do it, but it wasn't like common, uh, yeah, a common thing. So I have a um, such a cartridge that can do it, it's uh, made by a friend from Australia. 
so I won't build it myself. I can't do it myself. I, I have to admit, I don't do it. <laughs> I just have the people who can do it. Wow. Um, but then, that's really cool. Because you can replace the Nintendo logo, you can kind of um, build that into the start screen. So you can, you know what I mean? I could let fall down Tronimo and then build something around it. I don't have to use the Nintendo thing and think about what to do with it. I can, I can do anything then. I, it's just it's limited to the same pixel uh, size. I can't make anything bigger just for the scrolling down, falling down thing. I can make it smaller, but I can make it bigger. But I could like pixel something that uh, suits the title screen. Yeah. I don't want to have Tronimo falling down. Actually. Of course, of course. But yeah. but I can use something that that's cool for the for the intro for the title screen. And that's kind of the plan. It will be, get a little bit expensive, but I think that's worth it. Ping me. I will definitely be one of your customers. Yeah. That doesn't will, scare me off. It will be limited again, but it, because it's just so expensive to do a huge run, I, I can't afford it. So I think I will be like 100 copies again, like the last time. Just, <laughs> just, just tell me. I, I will do a, like a pre-order thing. So. Yeah, sure. Oh, of course, if certain. then if if there are enough people that do the pre-order and I, I can afford to make like two hundred copies, I would make it. But of I can't course. like I can't like uh, make it on my own because I don't have the money for that. You know, there's Kickstarter and Indiegogo crowdfunding. <clears throat> yeah, I last time I really thought about using Kickstarter and then I decided against it. So I think I don't think I will use Kickstarter, but I'm not sure yet. You could go with Indiegogo that has flexible funding. So even if you don't reach your goal, you can get part of the money at least. Ah, oh, no, that's not the problem, I think. Because I, I, can, I, I can use a bit of my own money as well. So I don't have to set the goal so high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could do it in Kickstarter. And that, I think that's not the problem. But then I was like, ah, then they get this amount of money and they get this amount of money and then you have to do this and that and you have to document True. this or that. True. I can True. just make the, I can just finish the product. Yeah, uh, get contact to all my um, manufacturers and then I, I know how much I have to spend and then I set up pre-order and then people pre-order and the rest I will, I will, um, pay myself and then it's done it's it's really less complicated but you can reach reach much more people if you do it through kickstarter true true because true. kickstarter is like a platform where people search for these kind of things especially true. so you, because i have pretty much just a german audience and then i could reach more people that are not from germany so but Perhaps. i don't i don't Perhaps really I don't really care if I do 100 or 200 copies. Or oh, 1,000. <laughs> because because it's it's now it's not my job anymore. I, I don't I don't want to make money from this. Right. You know I don't care. The, the thing I care about is like that I have one for myself in my shell and that I can use it for play music. Yeah, and I think that's everybody who buys it has the same reason for buying it. They want it in a, in their shell and they want to listen to it. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, I listen. Sure, I'm using yeah. it. I'm using um, it. So that's that's kind of the thing, you know. It's it's enough. So it's 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 enough for me if it comes out. I don't care about the numbers. Uh, I just want it to be there to be available if somebody likes it. And for the old one, you can still get the ROM for free. That was all the all the time. The ROM was available for free. Just the bonus song was switched. With a bonus song from another band, mm. uh, so a friend of mine made made an extra song, and that is the bonus song for the download album, so that it differs, so that you don't have the exact same thing if you download it. I thought that was a cool idea, so that you have the That's same. You ask. <laughs> yeah, but you have you have the same amount of songs, so you have a, you have an extra song if you download it. I think that's cool, and um, I didn't take like. The most iconic song and blocked this from the download. Yeah, I still left like I think Club Gespenster is one of the uh, uh, most liked songs that I did, and this is still on the download. So I think if I if I if I just took that away, I think that that would be a bit shitty. Of course, of course. a bit shitty move. Yes. And I, I didn't want to exclude. The, I had two remixes on on the album. I think 
and of course I let them in there as well because I don't want to like throw out a friend yeah like from the, from the cartridge because, of course of yeah. course yeah it's an <laughs> impressive journey oh my god oh my god yeah yeah it's it's not a, it's not a usual journey so I, I would even if I quit the thing kind of yeah I didn't quit music but I quit it as a main job and, and stuff um, I would still kind of do it again or redo it if I, if I had to or should or could or whatever um, yeah it was fun it was kind of hard sometimes as well because you have no money at some at some month <laughs> but yeah it's like why should I do the the same boring thing all my life? Yeah, I can True. if I if I want to start something, I can I can just try it if it works or if if it's fun or whatever. Um, now I do a usual job, but also this job I picked like because I like it and not so just to do something. Yeah, and I can I can do it for the rest of my life. But if I want to try something out, I can still do that. And yeah, now I have a job that, where I don't have to work every day. So. I can do both now, but I don't have to um, make money from the music. I can just do sure. really what I like. So that's that's kind of cool. I did what I like gladly all the time because I had these secures. Uh, like I told you, like two years, you you can't have any problems in, in that thing. So yeah. after the pandemic, do you plan to resume your live stage acts at some point? Mm, I don't think I will ever come back uh, to make that many um, live shows because I played really I played almost every week or all to every uh, second week um, in in my busy times. So in the times where in the years where I was really focusing on that, I played more than two gigs every. Um, every month uh, over uh, over two years. Wow. I really played a lot of gigs, um, especially when you think about that it's a chip tune thing and not like a usual rock band or something. Of course, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I won't do that again. No, never. But like the the places that I really like, where, where I really like to play, like Gamescom or Revision was very great. Or demo parties at uh, um, at all. I, like super fun to play. Um, also, uh, uh, retro bars, uh, so the retro fairs, yeah, where where people like it and where, where it's like cool. You meet people, also you connect to new people because you play there. Uh, um, of course, I will do that in the future, but I won't be on every demo party and on every. Uh, I might not even come to the Gamescom like every day. You know what I mean? Course, so maybe it's course. just like three days instead of five days. I don't know yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Depends on how, uh, you know, on holiday times, of course, as sure, well. Yeah? Sure, sure. Um, because now I, I get a new job. Like right now, I get a new job and I have to work on the weekends. Mm. But sure. I have to only work, like, I have to only work two weekend days in a month. Mm. So I could, like, I could still make it on the weekend to play a concert. I just have to, like, um, yeah, sure. plan my schedule very good yeah. but it's not like no i won't play any gig every gig i can i can get like, <laughs> true, that true. anymore but revision is fun. not it's not germany only revision is quite international the audience at least yeah of course it's super it's it's the biggest demo scene party i think that's still there and uh yeah that was fun i was there like i think i was there three times but i played i played only one time but I played like the deadline demo party and I played at the outline demo party and uh, I think another one. It's that's cool because you can connect so many people that are like somehow connected to uh, some art form with computers or consoles. So they have like a special view of things uh, on on your music. And so you connect to these people. If you play on a Gamescom convention, they are mostly gamers. That have a totally different view, but you still connect new people, and you, right. yeah. And there are, I, I met people like in the first two or three years there that I still talk to like almost every month nowadays. So I really met cool people that I would call my friends, yeah, even if they don't uh, live uh, around where I live. So if I, I don't, I can't see them very often, but still they are friends. 
and then you meet like on these uh, retro fairs you meet other people that are just True. into retro True. mostly or something like that but that's really that's the, the i think that's the coolest thing about um about the concerts and of course if you can make some money that's also helpful but that's mm -hmm. not the main part that stays in your memory you know for me it's always games come like hey i will i will meet um, you are Gritter House again. Oh my yeah. God, that's amazing, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, that's actually why it is uh, two years ago that we met the last time. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it probably won't won't be live this year either. So probably we will not see each other before next year. Yeah. The the thing is, like, even if Gamescom will happen this year, I don't know if I will come this year. Because one thing is, I don't know if I would get holidays, uh, the okay on my holidays. And um, yes, other private things that I don't know if it work, will work this year. But next year, if it is, if it happens again, I will be there. I know that for sure. Fingers crossed for that. Um, crossed. Only thing that I don't know is like, will I stay the whole week? Because that's you know that that's so exhausting. Ah, uh, like ask, ask me about it. Ask it's about ex exhausting for for the for the people that do like uh, the setups like in the retro area. It's exhausting for the musicians as shit. You know me, I scream a bit on stage and stuff like that. That's like that's like <laughs> super terrible, exhausting. And, but it's also super exhausting for the visitors. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. they are. They are also blown away. Like on the last day, you see it. Like they walk around like zombies. They want to be there, but they walk around like zombies. So, being there for a whole week almost takes me two weeks to recover after that. True. Usually, True. and I don't know if I want to do this when I have to do my normal usual job <laughs> at the True. same time. So maybe I say, okay, I will come like three days and work three days on stage. Maybe I will stay five days, but I will work three days on stage or something like that so that I can get like recovered within a few days and not in, not it will not take me 14 days. <laughs> so the rest of the days you will be a normal visitor, perhaps. Yeah, maybe that would be a cool thing to do. You know, that's exactly <clears throat> why after each Gamescom I need one week off holiday afterwards. Yeah, That's the exact course. reason. I always needed to recover. Many people are like super exhausted and also many people get sick because you meet so many people and you yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's really a lot of people that are sick after these huge events. Uh, and True. it takes me, it takes me days to, to come back to a half normal state and no joke, it's like two weeks till I feel normal, you, normal again, like okay. every time, every time. And it's like. I don't know. Some days are so crazy. Like, I know three years ago, I I did one stay, uh, one concert lying on the stage because I I couldn't st get up anymore. I had, had no power left. Wow. Uh, but everything, everybody thought like it was like s some stage concept uh, funny thing. Yeah. <laughs> but no, actually, I was so tired. I was so fucked up. Um, oh my God, yeah. But I know that I can like sell it this way. Yeah, that everybody thinks it's part of the show because you can do anything, and everybody thinks it's like planned part of the show. Yeah, it's it's true. If you don't like, if you make a mistake and you just tell people that you made the mistake, everybody thinks that was on purpose. Yeah, if if you run away hiding or something, then they oh you made a mistake, but. I'm, I'm not that type of person true, like true. and I'm kind of extroverted so that helps a lot on stage and <laughs> connecting people and uh, yeah it's it's really it's really it's really hard sometimes there on it's gamescom it's really gamescom only I, I never experienced something that is so hard to do because it's so long like full power for five or six days it's crazy and even revision that is three days I, uh, it's it's super exhausting but it's not comparable to gamescom gamescom is the hardest thing i've ever done yeah gamescom is a special i mean gamescom is also also a place where uh, cultures are connected i i remember uh, the last gamescom um 
we were in there early because you know we had to build up and open yeah. the booth and then there was this russian 15 years old teenager with 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 um with his with his mom and you know his mom was like i don't speak english <laughs> i can't help you and he and he and he was fluent in english and he was asking hey can you help me how to get to this booth yeah. of this of this company because they have a live presentation on stage and i want to go there so we are trying to explain <laughs> to him how to get there and so I was yeah, like, okay, cool. that can only happen at Gamescom, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think um, thing for me is also like um, I I always come a bit later than you people do. Yeah, I don't come at I don't know when you arrive at eight o'clock or seven o'clock in the, in the morning. Half past eight, kind of. Yeah. yeah, and usually I come between nine and ten. But if you close the doors, when you close the doors, not if, when you close the doors in the evening. I start playing outside and I stay like two or three hours longer than everybody else. So my work's just shifted. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. So I, see. I think that's that's another part that I have to change if I don't want to take two weeks off afterwards. <laughs> well, but we are all getting older. Yeah, we are all part. getting older. Yeah. yeah, but it was terrible in the first year. <laughs> <laughs> it's still terrible. I, I don't know if it can get more terrible than just terrible. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they had into discussion to make it 24 hours. Yeah. So, so even in the night, but they threw that overboard. Um, yeah, that would be a problem for for the smaller um, booth, I think. So if you if you have a small company or if you're an indie developer or if you have a retro uh, area part or something, you can't do it because there are people that work kind of alone or in really small teams. I think the the big companies they they could do it if they want is another question. Shiftwork. And and the and the the visitors, man, I don't know if they can really do it. I think they have to be like so many like uh, these these. What are these called? These um, uh, guards. Like, yeah, the the guards and the the helpers for the like hospital helpers, you know, because I think all the people would like be so <laughs> damaged and they would, <laughs> you know, if that was a twenty four hour thing. You mean a medic? Yeah, the medics. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. <clears throat> medics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would need so many medics. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Do you know the do you know the movie Starship Troopers? Yeah, but it's like such a long time. Yeah, nine, 95, I think it was. Uh, so um, I don't and, remember. And there's this like, one scene where where the general is is killed with a bullet in his head, and and the soldier is running, um, is uh, shouting medics, medics. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, it's already too late. You know, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, that would be the same. Totally would be the same. Zombie survival. Yeah. It's not Gamescom, it's a real life action computer game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so before we quit, let's talk a bit. You said you also make live streams sometimes. Yeah, I do, I do live streams. Talk yeah. about that, perhaps. Um, yeah, okay. So I did. I, I I tell you how I started it. Sure. Because there was like such a huge break now, like for the music. I, I didn't do anything for like one or two years. So um, I did workshops. So game of music workshops in the past. So where I explained uh, to people. Um, how to do music in the, for me, usual way with the little sound DJ software. Uh, so I usually connected a Beamer and uh, a VGA modded Game Boy, and then I could tell people. So I did this on, um, yeah, in kind of business rooms, and I did this on Retro Fair stage uh, and something like that, but usually in groups like with 10 to 20 people. And uh, I always made like these um, pay what you want thing from it. So based on donations, so it doesn't matter if you have money or not, you can take part. I think that's that's really important because I know times when you don't have money and I don't want to uh, exclude these people that don't have lots of money. And it always worked out fine. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, I did that. But there are often people that like are. Oh, I, I was based in Wuppertal at that time, so it's near to Cologne and Düsseldorf and stuff like that. So then you have the people from Munich who want to take part, but they can't afford it or they can't get enough free time because they have to plan and they have to get a hotel or whatever. Uh, so every time there was like at least the same amount of people who were there that could tell me I can't, can't make it. And then I thought about like, yeah, what's uh, if I just use Twitch and I explain beforehand, if you don't own a flash card and a Game Boy, how to set up an emulator and the software. So you could, you could try it at home while you watch the stream. And you could still ask questions because it's a live stream. So that's pretty cool for a workshop. So that's why I started streaming on Twitch. Um, but I did like, let's say I did when I did one workshop, I did also like 20 normal gaming streams. But of course, not normal gaming, like totally usual gaming. So it's it was always um, Game Boy related or at least retro related. And I almost on every um, stream, I also play a little bit of music. So I present new songs or something like that, or I show a little bit of how it's done or I present new software. So it's always like, let's say if I present four games, like every game, like half an hour, I also present half an hour of music. So you have both of it. And I also ever, I can never explain anything, but you know, the you can't make a Game Boy Music Workshop every week. <laughs> That would be that would be quite quite uh, stupid, I think. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I started six weeks ago. I I restarted streaming on Twitch. Uh, I didn't do a workshop yet. I did music two or three times now. So, uh, but already people are asking me for workshops <laughs> again. <laughs> So I told them I will do it, but um, as the developer of the software is so active at the moment again, I told them, okay, he changed so much. I really want to get back into it because I had such a long break myself so that I can explain the new functions as well. Interesting. And I want to wait for a little bit more stable version. But the latest version now that came out like, I think two or three days ago, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was three days ago. Um, that's a stable candidate. Because a he marks it. candidate. Huh? Yeah, he, he marks it as this. Um, there's one, one really small bug we discovered, but that's nothing that would break the, the, the software or the music. So that's that's just the like cosmetic issue. Um, so maybe I will do it like in the next yeah two months or something somewhere uh, yeah before before may so um because i i used it a lot again so i i think i kind of get the new functions and yeah then i will do workshop again because that's kind of it's special and it's funny and there are always a lot of people interested compared to my usual view accounts because i'm this is really a small channel i have like maybe i have like 200 followers or something on Twitch because I never used it for a long time or I tried to yeah. make it big or something. Yeah, true. You have it's to build up thing. your audience slowly. But usually yeah. people in that size, channel size, they have like five to ten viewers or something. I have like usually have like a little bit more. I have like 20, 15 or 20 viewers. Um, but if I do a workshop, I have easily have the first stream I ever done. I had like over 30 viewers the whole time. And I was, I was uh, already like affiliate for Twitch, but I didn't have these uh, seven days streaming you, you would need to have. So I just had to stream for six more days. Wow! <laughs> wow! Get, yeah, that was so 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 weird. But I, of course, I already had um, had an audience because of uh, the music uh, projects. And so it's not like I started from nothing. Yeah, sure, I, I sure. just bring over some people also. But the, the music workshops, there are more viewers than in my usual streams. And it's fun because it's fun to explain. And then people, if people stay there, if people start making music. That's very cool. This is like 
uh, vault kit I, I told you about him that i will make the cartridge release um he actually he saw me on this um yeah streaming show uh x tv show from the rocket beans i was uh, invited by the uh, rocket beans and he, sh he saw me there and that's how he got into chip tune and actually i think one year later or two years later i didn't know him there i asked him because i heard his music i asked him if i can do a remix from his work from his first ep and he was like oh crazy you know what and then he told me about the rocket beans thing <laughs> so he started because of me being a guest wow. in, a, in a show that he watched and yeah now we kind of work together um not we don't work together like all the time but it's like every year we do something that's kind of cool like <clears throat> i said you are a brand meanwhile already <laughs> I, i'm like super small brand yeah. <laughs> you are so <laughs> modest you are I, i'm so like modest. the the niche the the nichiest niche brand <laughs> but yeah if, if you really if you are really into game boy music then yeah then i am brand but if you're just into music nobody knows me you know what i mean it's like i'm into game boys that's yeah. my reason <laughs> you know what i mean but you know what i mean yeah sure sure sure, sure it's sure. like i'm not that big but i may be big in in the game boy especially in the german game boy scene because i do usually do my content in german But but I found your history and your way so interesting. I was so excited to have you finally here as a guest. You know, I was kind of asking you every couple of months, like, when can we do the interview? I really yeah, want to do did. this. I and really I want always to had to say I can't do it. That was, yeah, right. That was kind of. Uh, so for me, for me, for me, you you are important. For me, it was you a are, bit of was a bit of heartbreaking that I could say, yeah, let's do it. But I just, I didn't have the possibilities in the last two years. No problem. No problem. That, no that problem. was so, so such, that was That's, a weird time for me, I have to say. So stopping this and then don't have to, uh, don't have the possibilities to even do this hobby wise, really. Yeah. That was really weird. That was a strange yeah. feel, yeah. but it also was kind of good timing because of the whole, uh, crazy stuff that is going on uh, right now for the musicians right. and uh, I started my first usual job in February last year the and right before the that pandemic. was the best timing you could imagine really wow. to stop okay. with music yeah <laughs> really that was so good I just I just told it my boss when I was when, when I canceled my last job now I have a new one Uh, I was like, hey, I'm so grateful that I came here at that time and that I could work uh, all the time. And um, it's true. It's true. Um, they, yeah. they were, they, it was really, there were so many cool people. I was really happy about the, the people that I had to work with. I was just not happy about the schedule <laughs> <laughs> and true. some some other things like stress factor wise. But that was so cool. And the timing was perfect. I didn't know it, of course. No, the timing was just perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because if I, had, if I had done this as a job, as a full-time job still, and I, I wouldn't have these um, bonus uh, money from, from help, help money. I don't know how the English word is. So um, I wouldn't have that anymore. So yeah. that would, like, that would ruin everything true you know true. i couldn't I couldn't afford my flat pay my flat or something like that and that would be really crazy <laughs> you know you know um musicians like uh, reinhard may yeah they actually have to reinvent himself i mean he made a youtube <laughs> channel with 78 I was like, oh my That's god, crazy. he's 78 and he and he's doing a youtube channel now you know yeah but it's cool <laughs> He's, you know? still, he's still trying to do something. That's good. Yeah. So I it's, think that's really cool. So all those, you know, you would say old people or elderly people are suddenly jumping into Twitch and YouTube because they, they don't see any other option to to stay in the loop, you know? Yeah, it's true. But And I think for smaller bands, it's really, really hard because you can't grow a, a huge audience fast. True. And um, really for the smaller bands, um, the, the money you get paid for gigs makes a bit. But what really does a lot is selling merch on concerts mm. for all the small bands. I know that that makes a lot of um, their income and you can't do that on Twitch. 
true. So if you are a big musician, you can build up an audience and maybe that works out quite well. But if you are a small musician, you're so you're so like, yeah, I don't I, I don't I can beep it out the word. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's no, it's horrible. I think for small musicians. I know one friend who's still um, who managed to get a, a little bit of help money, but it's like so little that he can't afford anything but to pay his rent and his food. So and he's really a great musician and he's really a crazy talent and he's playing special stuff. So he's he's really big in didgeridoo playing. Wow. So he's kind of um yeah, he's well known and he's um in the scene and he's usually you can make kind of a good amount of money for normal living. But now it's horrible for him and I get that. And you can if you are that type of guy, I don't think Twitch will bring anything to you yeah. because you would have to build something up and that would take you like maybe it would take you a year, maybe it would take you half a year, maybe it would take you two yeah. years. Depends on what kind of person you are and if you want to talk on stream or if you just want to do music, that changes a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can talk all day. I talk <laughs> all day usually, so that's really okay. good when you do want to do Twitch streams. I see that. We are hitting uh, we are hitting one hour and a half now. Yeah, so. you told me like I have to uh, my um, you told me like eight till twenty two o'clock, so I, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, right. but I usually also private in private ways. I talk a lot, so um, uh, yeah, that are... that helps for streaming. Yeah, especially when you want to present a game or something, that helps. It's boring otherwise, you know. I don't watch streamers that don't talk. Uh, for for us doing this podcast, it's more convincing people to speak English, you know. That's more of the task for us, you know. Yeah. Ah, my accent, my accent. I'm like, nobody cares about your accent. Nobody. Yeah, but gives you to as a podcast, if the if the person do, uh, doesn't talk from itself, uh, kind of, you can ask questions. True. True. Yeah, but if you are a small streamer, maybe nobody will ask a question. True, true, true. that's all the <laughs> thing. It gets that's boring, yeah. yeah. yeah to, me, course, to, me, <laughs> to me, you are always the cartridge guy. Because yeah. that's, if, that's how I got to know you. You were like, hey, I got this Game Boy cartridge release. Do you want it? I'm, want I'm, it? I'm kind of the cartridge guy because no one else is doing cartridges. Uh, there's one other guy in uh, US-based. That did a cartridge release. Um, he did two, um, but I don't know anybody else. Now for homebrew, okay, but not for music. Sure. sure. I, did, yeah. I don't know anybody else. I, now there's one guy that made kind of a, a hybrid music game thing, and he, he made a, like a promotional clip, and he told like he was the only guy who does. Uh, Game Boy cartridge stuff at all, like game wise and music wise, and I was like, like, oh no, I hate, I hate this stuff. <laughs> but the the ba the game is not bad. Yeah. But I just wrote them. Please do your homework. Please, please for don't forget about uh, all the other people that do it for years. <laughs> so. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> every time, every time I watch a YouTube channel, um, that is that that is um coining on retro yeah. and is done by a 20 something person and i was like okay this is wrong he said that is wrong he said <laughs> there yeah. he didn't do his research and i was like ah and I'm, I'm always i'm always writing in the comments like on minute yeah. something you said you make you made an exam assumption that's wrong and in minutes <laughs> some in, in, in this minute you you made a statement that's totally wrong please look up wikipedia or something yeah, you know yeah. educate yourself you know the thing educate. is if, if you do a game card release it's not so hard to find out that there are others it's maybe hard to find out all of them yeah and i don't think that you have to do this but if you like stated like i'm the only one who does that maybe you should look up if that's true before you before you say it. the cool thing was i wrote it and then he and another guy wrote like oh cool please could you tell me the other people and maybe i can buy this stuff and, and stuff like that so it was kind of still a, a nice outcome you know what i mean <laughs> but, you would, but one would still wonder he didn't google yeah, 
give it a yeah, try. <laughs> kind of, because he made it like this big statement. I'm the only one that I think, okay, maybe you check before or not. That's kind of weird. If that you don't find a music cartridge, for example, that wouldn't surprise me because you have to search for it. You have to really search for it. You won't, if you just type in gamer music card, I don't think you will find me or uh, Nitro who did the other uh, release. I don't think so. So that's that's okay. I'm fine with that if you if you don't recognize it. But to tell, I, I'm I made the only game for the Game Boy in like thirty years or whatever you told or Ooh. twenty years it was like so, <laughs> no, absolutely not, not that even close. No, not as close. Um, there was this case, however, on the Super Nintendo Unholy Night. This. Uh, Yeah. This beat 'em up game. Yeah. That was that was the first game in 18 years, and um, I remember the the distribution was done by Amazon USA, and uh -huh. normally Amazon is like you order it, and and uh, at least four days later they ship it. Yeah. In my case, it took eight weeks till they even shipped it. Uh -huh. So so I I called them up. And I said, like, why are you not shipping it to me? It's it's sitting there, like, saying, shipping soon, you know? Yeah. Preparing for shipment since <laughs> eight weeks. And they told me, like, yeah, we were totally overwhelmed by the amount of orders. Oh, crazy. They didn't think that so many people from around the world would would order a Super Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> 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 They they actually gave me a refund for the ship for for the shipping costs. Oh, that's yes. nice. Oh, yeah. they seems they did a good promotion job. I was like, oh my god, it was. I think it was six weeks, six weeks or something. I was like, oh my god, it's not even shipped, you know. And then yeah. of course you have to take into account customs, waiting time, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course. And I'm like, oh my god, this is taking forever, you know. This is taking yeah. forever. I really see that in a lot of homebrew titles for the Game Boy that. Um, No matter how good the games are, it's like the pro the promo thing is the promo move is very important <laughs> if you want to sell some. Yeah. So there there are really good games that that had a hard start, and then afterwards people like, oh, I want to buy this now. I saw this, I want to buy this, but it's just out. Yeah, it's it's sometimes then it's just also it's too late to redo it and do another manufacturing run, or if you do it like me. If you if I tell people it's limited to 100 copies, I won't do another 100 copies. That would be so that would suck hard for the collectors. I think mm. Mm. I, I would be I would be kind of angry if I was a collector and there was a limited uh, thing and then there would come 100 more. Actually, like if actually, it's if it's not, if you write it really obvious on the on the box or something, that's like the the next run or something. Yeah, okay, maybe that's okay, but I don't know. I know so many collectors. I don't think it's good to do that. <laughs> Actually, I had the same discussion with uh, Stefano Arnold. Back then, he was CEO of Tectoy, the biggest toy company in Brazil. And oh. they, in 2017, they made this um, Mega Drive limited edition, 2017. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And then in the interview, he said, like, people were totally angry. Why why is it not sold anymore? And they actually had to make it unlimited. It's still called limited edition, but it's not limited anymore. And 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 he said that he was communicating with fans and stuff, and he was saying, like, but but won't you be angry if suddenly the limited edition isn't limited anymore? And the most, the vast majority of feedback he got from from the Brazilian gamers was like, "No, we will be very angry if you make it limited." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to this day, I mean, it's four years later. It's still available. You can still buy it online. So the limited 2017 edition is not really <laughs> limited anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe I have to think about that, but I have it to. It depends. Do... I guess it depends on the audience. Yeah, and I would have to do like kind of huge runs I, i couldn't just manufacture 10 of it or something because that would would get way too expensive so if or, there are or you do it like other publishers like pico that buy a license and then reprint it based on a license 
Yeah, I don't know if that will work out with the Game Boy module. <laughs> I can build my own cards, but then it's like I don't want to have the DIY flavor in my releases. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I want this questions. and I want this logo thing to happen, as yeah, I told yeah. you. And then it's like I can't tell the manufacturer because he's doing this more or less by hand. I can't tell him make thousand of this because he couldn't. You wouldn't be able to finish it. That's so true. I. I would say like do something in between 50 and 100 units. Yeah. And then if it would be more then I had to do two runs and I have to think about if I want to do it because it's like a lot of work also. That's true. Still, That's yeah. true. If you sell a license to somebody to republish it, to reprint it, you don't know if it's in the way you would you would like it yeah. to to be in the end. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And I mean, I mean, if I look at some republished titles, like one hundred sixty-nine dollars for Mega Man on the NES, oh, no. um, I'm not no. sure I want to have that anymore. <laughs> after looking at the price tag, you know. Um, yeah, sadly, it's kind of expensive to make the uh, small runs. So really, the package for my Game Boy release. Just the package, not the release, and uh, not the CD. I just think just the package was more than half of the selling price that I had to pay. Wow. Yeah, that's so. And if I would do like a thousand instead of a hundred, <clears throat> that, that might end up like costing a third of that oh, per unit. You know what I mean? It's like wh where you see it the most is like if you print stickers or flyers. You did that in the past, I guess. Like you do two hundred, sure. you, you yeah, you do two hundred stickers. It's the same exact same price as five hundred. And if you do a thousand, it's like thirty cent more <laughs> in exactly, total, yeah. not per unit. So, exactly. And it's the same with packages. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you do a small run, and I consider a hundred units a kind of very small run. That means you have to become international, so you can multiple mul multiply it by by ten or something. Yeah, and then I couldn't. Uh, then I can manufacture all the boards that I wouldn't need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least for the Game Boy, you don't have to worry about NTSC and Paul. Because, yeah, luckily. Because, uh, because I, I worry. I worry about it a lot, but for a totally different reason. You know, people, especially in selling Game Boy stuff, groups on Facebook or something like that, they keep telling the Europe releases, Paul releases for the Game Boy. But there's no Paul in the Game Boy. It's not I a know. TV thing, yeah? And it's, it triggers me hard. So I write kind of, sometimes I write, like, that, that doesn't exist, yeah? Please right. check it out. The thing is, like, there's a huge um, seller company that does um, Game Boy games nowadays. They even call it Paul on the website. Oh. And then I think like, oh, dudes, really? They do such a great job with the games, but that is like so weird. And then like uh, a friend of mine who's doing a DMG page blog. It's a blog just about uh, Game Boy. Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about. I yeah, know. he's doing yeah. this for years. Um, he, he is really amused by the whole thing he, because he knows that I get like, kind of angry not really angry but but it like triggered it, it triggered triggered. me yeah so he keeps sending me stuff <laughs> where, where <laughs> people talk about pop and then like last week or two weeks ago he sent me uh the i think us wikipedia about game boy and even this has paul in it for the for the european uh releases uh, so it's even wrong in the wikipedia yeah. and it's like it's like fighting against windmills, you know. I know, it's like I know. Everywhere it's popping up the fucking yeah. ball thing. For the NES, it's even worse. Uh, some uh, because there are some places where uh, even databases where it's claiming there are regions like Asia, and uh, like, uh, yeah, no, yeah. there is no region <laughs> Asia. That's so wrong because <laughs> Japan has NTSC and China has Paul. Yeah. So. How can you how can you say the region is Asia? That's <laughs> impossible. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, I, and I wrote like, hey, there is a, a major mistake in your database. Oh no, we keep it that way. Okay, then keep it that way. 
I think the funniest thing is like on the Wikipedia page I, I talked about, then you, uh, of course, Paul, the word Paul is a link to another Wikipedia page where is explained what Paul means. And you can see that that doesn't make sense at all because it's a TV thing. <laughs> so you click on this misinformation and you kind of get like the right information, but then it totally makes no sense at all anymore. Uh, uh, I like it. I kind of like it. I kind of think it's funny uh, myself, but it still triggers me. Yeah, and um, yeah, then uh, last week I wrote somebody in, in a group like, uh, he, because he told about Paul Game Boy Games again, and I was like, there's no Paul, and then he was like, yeah, I know, because I have a, I have a full set, US and U Europe, and I thought, like, man, you should know that shit. And he was like, yeah, but it's so it's so hard to explain because there's more than one code. There's not all uh, Europe. There's yeah, also there's NOE and UKV and something like that. And I was like, yeah, and then you write PAL instead of Europe. I that doesn't make sense at all. That was just true. a lame, a lame yeah. excuse, you know. True, true. But, true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's, a, there's one... There is one thing at the Game Boy where it is important, and most people don't know that the Super Game Boy is not the exact clock speed as the original Game Boy. Yeah, no, I did a modification for that. <laughs> but but <laughs> I was smart. When I bought my Super Game Boy cartridge, I bought the Super Game Boy 2 cartridge Two. from Japan yeah. because it, that has the timing issue fixed. And the link port. And the link port. Yeah. 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 That's uh, I. I did a modification for that, but I didn't invent it. I just did it. But I have um, the explanation on my website. So if somebody want to build a, a, a link port into a usual Super Game Boy or make the clock speed right or an audio output, a direct audio output, yeah, you can do that. And it's not really hard. You just have to get a link port. That might be the biggest struggle to get a link port. So. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, going back to Road Rash, there is there there is this there is this um, uh, review video of Road Rash, um, and the and the um, reviewer is complaining about the gameplay being choppy, and and then I'm like, yeah, that's because you you made the record on a Super Game Boy, and, you know, ah, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and because because. When I compared his recording and on my Game Boy Classic, yeah, mine was totally fluid. The gameplay was fluid. There was no sharpness or something. It's still a bad game. It's still a horrible game. But yeah, then not, I might not, not own it. Reason. I don't really know anymore all of the games I own because it's it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if I don't like a game, I sell it. So it's like. Um, I play every game that I that I buy, and if I like it, I keep it, and if I don't like it, I sell it. So, and if you say it's a bad game, um, really and I don't remember it having it, so I, I I get I think it's. I only bought it because yeah, it's one of two games that crashes on a yeah, Game Boy. That, that, you know, people are like, "Oh, you're shitting me! That can't be real!" I'm like, try it. Here yeah, is the I can imagine. There's yeah. weird stuff happening. <laughs> try it. Like, you put it in, like crashing it's not I, even booting it's just right crashing i, I think the the most uh, stupid thing that that is working but kind of not working is like if you put the game boy camera in and game boy uh, advance sp because it's upside down <laughs> you right, can't really use right, it right, right. <laughs> and yeah. uh you, i don't know if you know the um there's a kirby game uh it's Oh, what's the English name? Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. Co -co exactly. Kirby. It's, uh, yeah. It has this mo motion um, steering. Right, so where right. you move the Game Boy right. to uh, steer the, uh, steer, the um, right. steer Kirby. Yeah. And if you put it in advanced SP, it's upside down, so you can't play it anymore. Right, yeah, <laughs> I, I read about that. I don't that, own this game, but I should put it on my list. Anyway, there there is this uh, Mario mini game cartridge. There are a couple of them. And one was only released in USA because for the thumpling mechanism they used Quicksilver, oh. and that is illegal in toys in yeah. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. So I bought it from Console Cost Berlin, yeah. who who didn't know what they are selling, and that is is that it is illegal to sell in <laughs> Germany, and I bought it, and it's so I have. I have one of those illegal 
cartridges. Is, it, is this these Game Boy Advance uh, games in the classic look? Um, or what is it? Yes, it's exactly exactly. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. It's, uh, it's 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 mini games. I don't know. It's but what, uh, is it, for what system was it usually released? So it is uh, Game, Game Boy, Boy Game Boy Advance. Color or Advance? Game Advance. Boy Advance. Game Boy and it's Advance. like the NES classics stuff, or is it something even? No, it's else? mini games. It's okay, just then like, I don't know it. Um, no, I, yeah. I don't remember. I don't. But remember. I don't have a lot of advanced stuff. I, I right. maybe have like twenty games or something. Well, I just bought it because I knew that it is illegal in Germany because of this Quacksilver. Yeah. And I was like, I need, I need to have this. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You know? yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you go through eBay, like going through because you are bored. Like, oh my God, console and cost Berlin <laughs> is selling this game inside Germany. <laughs> you know, whoa. Because, you know, such a game, if, if you try to buy it from America and the customs are doing research. I don't know. I want if I want to go get into those troubles, you know. Yeah. Because I had this problem once when when I got a console from Brazil, they returned it because there was ah, no CE. CE. Yeah, yeah, I know that problem. Yeah, I luckily I never I never had the problem because I uh, sometimes buy uh, stuff from Japan and sometimes it's missing the CE logo as well, but. The, usually uh, there are consoles that are uh, available here as well so i think they don't really care about it or check it at, at all or whatever depends depends yeah. it was a very very motivated young woman <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the customs office <laughs> maybe new in the job and I should check it and they <laughs> yeah 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 maybe yeah and 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 you know and what what did i do it returned to 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 uh, brazil of course i had to pay for the shipping again yeah. and then and then i ask a friend of mine who has a cousin um that is living in austria in vienna and he ah. is importing diagnostic equipment constantly yeah and they don't need ce in austria no. they they uh, they they need it but as a company importing stuff in bar ah, yeah 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 of they course. don't I really check so yeah, yeah. So I told my friend in Brazil, hey, I have this Austrian f cousin's friend. Please ship it to his company. What, what usually also works quite good for consoles is like if you do express shipping, it goes directly to you and uh, you pay the um, customs afterwards. So usually they, they don't open it at all. I just yeah, I had I had to go to the customs a few times as well as i as when i still run my online shop and i still did this as a main job the music thing i i did merch as well and stuff um sometimes i ordered stuff for uh, game by modification and put it on my shop and then i had to explain really crazy boards modding boards to the customs right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like right. what is it and i was like right. explaining and they were like what the fuck is it and i was like i just write something like USB Game Boy adapter or whatever. So because I can explain it to you a well, hundred times, you won't get it. Yeah, and then they wrote like, "Oh, that's a good idea." Yeah, I will. I will just write USB adapter. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Well, you were lucky. You didn't have such an over motivated young uh, customs officer. Uh, people were really cool. Well, I, I, I wasn't here in, in my new hometown. Uh, I wasn't at the customs yet, but uh, in Bupata, where I lived before, I was at the customs quite a few times. And I was always super friendly, but I had to open a lot of packages there. Oh, yeah. But it was always like, I uh, open it. I was like, of course, cool. Yeah, Thank let's you. see. And then, oh, what is it? Uh, what is this? And what is, what is this? And I explained uh, it. I was always like, it was always special equipment, even for them, because it was like such weird stuff that I ordered. Like, <laughs> yeah, that is to build a VGA and put into your Game Boy. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, what the fuck? And I was just like, yeah, just write down video adapter. <laughs> you know, and, and then it. there was... Then there was this one time where DHL Germany messed up. I was buying the game SES, and the game SES is the most rarest game ever. So I was lucky I found a sheep, a sheep um, offer on eBay Marketplace in Japan. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, uh, sorry, I meant Amazon, Amazon Japan yeah. Marketplace. And I uh, and the seller wouldn't ship it outside of Japan, so I I shipped it to a 
to a pre uh, to a forward shipping company. Ah, uh, like Bai or something. Yeah, I used I used um, Black Ship. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know that as well. Yeah. And 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 the thing is, they did the customs papers correctly. They put the invoice. Even even customs themselves, you know, they checked and was yeah. like, all all correct. Everything is fine. And uh, you saw it says like forward to customer, but DHL ex itself labeled it as um, it the the item inside the parcel conflicts against our terms of services. What? Though they returned it to to Japan. Did, like, did they what? explain it? Uh, and 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 I was like, I was explaining to DHL like, no, it's a cartridge. It's a cartridge. It's a Game Boy game. It's not illegal. But some some per person in the sorting center thought otherwise, and they returned it. So the thing is, I had to get it shipped to me a second time, and then on the customs they wrote book. Yeah. <laughs> and then it passed through. Crazy. But that was that was that was like weird. And I, and I remember that was in 2017. In the exact same week, I was in Japan in the same town. So I was thinking oh, like, no. hey, now I could collect <laughs> it from the from the post office yeah. myself <laughs> when it returns, you know, because I'm I'm in the country right now. But no, I mean, I mean, um, and they they even the sender, the shipping forwarding company, they even called DHL in Germany. They explained that it was their mistake. But you know, Germans, Germans never make a mistake. <laughs> so uh, DHL Germany refused. They refused uh, to sad. reimburse. Yeah. But but I was lucky. I made a deal. I only paid for the express fee, and they made the second shipping for free. Yeah. Okay. At least that was something. nice of them yeah. because I was a new customer and they didn't want they didn't want to lose me, even though it was a clear mistake of the DHL uh, company. And that was the first time in my life that ever happened. You know, it, yeah. it even passed. It even passed That's customs. Weird. Yeah, that's you know, weird. It was like, okay, so weird. all checks done, and then <laughs> and then and then at the sorting center, some person is like, no, Game Boy cartridge is against our terms of service. That's so weird. <laughs> and you know, you know, in customs papers, you have to write very exactly what is in the parcel. So. Yeah, of course. I, I I did shipping overseas, so it's, so, uh, so it was like, okay, that's. Uh, you know, and and you can see it online. You know, can see online. Okay, custom check, custom check. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, the last you can see the whole history. Like, <laughs> and the uh, last entry was like item conflicts with our terms of service. Return to sender. That's so weird. Yeah, I I, I really can't can't figure out how this happens because I I work for the po for for the German Post. Not for DHL, just for the they the, as a postman, and uh, you, you bring letters to people. But we also do small packages and stuff. Right, I know. And I, I can't know. figure out who even checks the package in uh, in in um, uh, in the company. You know what I mean? We usually just look at the stickers that come from the customs, or uh, if there's uh, some like danger marks, like this is like. So uh, um, a battery or something. They have right, like markings, right, you know. Right, this yeah, is yeah. a battery. You can, uh, please be careful while transporting it, or something like that. There, there are some some stuffs. So or if you bring stuff to an hospital that's marked, I I once had to take uh, these little uh, blood uh, to 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 the doctor, like lots of package blood packages for wow. a doctor. <laughs> wow. And I have to be. I had kind of had to work fast because. Wow. You shouldn't, uh, yeah, um, bring this a day late or something like that. Sure. Of course, yeah, that was that was kind of weird. I just did. You, that you mean time. you mean blood plasma? Yeah. 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 Plasma. Yeah, they, wow. yeah, yeah. They tested something and I had to bring it. That was I know, was what kind of kind of funny as well because the, you see something totally different. Usually you bring these letters and then. You have a full post bag of of blood carrying around in your bicycle, <laughs> you know. And you have yeah. to search for the doctor, and then you have to find out where where the right um, where the right room is for for giving this away and stuff. That was kind. Uh, of... uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that's funny, <laughs> funny, funny. Okay, so, um, so the question would be, where can people find your stuff? Uh, if it's just about the music, uh, you can go on uh, Bandcamp. So it's tronimo.bandcamp.com. So if you search for anything else, I'm on every platform I use, like social media wise or music wise or like Twitch. I, I'm always, I've always kind of the username Tronimo, but sometimes this is given away to uh. a person called Christine or Kirstin or something, I think from the US. Um, And then I then I call myself Tronimo Music. So you can find me on Twitter. It's Tronimo Music. On I don't know on on SoundCloud. It's Tronimo. On YouTube. It's Tronimo Music. I'm not sure. Maybe it's Tronimo. No, it's Tronimo Music. So it's it's either one or, or the other. And yeah, Tronimo. Instead um, that I don't have to um, tell you the single uh, letters. <laughs> it's no, like, no, 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 no. It's it's made up from Tron and Animal kinda. Of course. Tron yeah. from the movie, I guess. Yeah, no, it's more like Tron because it's a kind of short form for electronic. Oh, okay. Not not yeah. because of the movie. Uh, I, I think the movie has the same idea because it's like it has a lot to do with electronic stuff. So sure. I think that's why they called it Tron. Um yeah, no, it's it's yeah, electronic, right. electronic short form kinda. Kinda. Some people use it, some movies use it, some bands have used it as well. And um, yeah, I, I called myself um, uh, Electro Revolter back in the days when I didn't do gamer music. <laughs> so maybe it was kind of an influence by that because I changed I changed my name uh, like three times because when I when I started gamer music, I started as Lobit Revolter because I wanted to make sure that it's the same person as Electro Revolter. So that people get it that I do a new project, but not I'm not a different person. And then I wanted I just wanted to change that name over the years. And the the only idea that I had that was kind of okay was Tronimo. <laughs> and it's more international. <laughs> mm, I don't know, I don't know. But there also was a, a chip tune band called uh, Low Bit Revolution, I think was it. True. So that, that was kind of similar, so that, that would suck as well. So yeah, Tronimo is okay. Uh, I I still think one day I will have like the, the best idea for a name and then I have to rename myself again. But <laughs> Rebrand yourself. <laughs> yeah. But uh. otherwise then you have to restart so many things if you do a rebrand. Right, right. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but you can find me on Bandcamp, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, on Twitter. On... And, you're the home and you have a homepage, right? Yeah, tronimol.de for Germany. For, um, but it's all in German, I think. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I had some uh, mod tutorials also in English. But the only one I can think of right now for my head is uh, the Game Boy VGA alt mod. But I blocked uh, the old tutorial because I haven't I reworked my own page, but I haven't done this article yet. Oh, okay. And so it's not available at the moment. But that was uh, introduced in two languages, so in English and in German, because many people that don't speak German wanted to see how it's done because there was no other tutorial available, at least at that time. And I think it's still today it's still the same but you really can't zoom but you you can't uh yeah maybe but you can't buy the boards anymore anyways so mm. it's not that important mm. um yeah I, i think i will i will redo it so it's just like uh the format i have to change the formatting you know that was done sure. in wordpress and sure. an old version and now it's Ooh. a new version and it's Ooh. just like three clicks and then I have to have to delete a few uh lines Yeah, and then, then it's done, kind of. So, yeah, I think so. And if if there's w something that is really important to somebody who can't speak German, I would I would redo it in English, the, the page. That's not the problem. But I think the most looked up thing in from chiptune artists is my uh, Game Boy Music software list. And to get what this what is on there you don't have to speak german at all even the the stuff is explained in german but it's all the the programs with screenshots and then i just wrote a single line like uh ein 8 bit step sequencer 
Yeah, and even if you can't uh, speak German, you would maybe get that there says 8-bit step sequencer because it's written exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> or you use so, DeepL or Google Translate. Yeah, so I think that's okay in German. And if, yeah. if there's some questions, translating there is not the problem for me. So if, if it's important to anyone, then no problem. Just just write me there an email or via the... <laughs> Send me flutters of emails. Con Flutter. Contact formula or contact me via... Twitter or Instagram or how uh, it's called Facebook or TikTok. I, I'm even on TikTok, but I didn't upload a single video. Woo! And uh, I just have one follower, I think, and I just follow one person. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't really use it. My smartphone always tells me it's uh, an unused app, uh, app. Please delete it. You know. <laughs> Yeah. You keep it low. You keep it. Yeah, low. but I want if I, I want to promote my new album, I thought like I make some short videos of every um, song, like and sure. put it on there because it's it's uh, it's used a lot sure. nowadays. So why not? So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, we once interviewed Remute. Yeah, uh, I know him. Yeah. yeah. And then he was like, "Yeah, Tronimali is always great. It's always good." Yeah. When yeah, I told him, "Yeah, yeah, we will have him for the interview," he was like, "Wow." Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I met him a few times, and he, he did an uh, interview for the Return magazine uh, a few years ago about me. Sure. And that was it was really great written, but there was like one one thing that was kind of a mistake or super funny to me. I, I told him like when I when I met him the next time in person, I told him like, "What the hell did you write there?" Because it's like my music. He described my music as, um, I think, electro pop or something like that. And I was like, dude, did you listen to the music? <laughs> I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. It's not, it's not like it's, uh, it's, it's like, to me, it's like um, a problem that he wrote it. But I, I think it's just that that is not the style of music I do. I was like a bit confused. I was like, okay, if you had maybe you had had two special songs or whatever, and mm. it might might be true, yeah. Mm. But um, yeah, most of my music is pretty melancholic, and something is pretty hard. But it's like it's not really happy music most of the time. So that was like this pop thing was like, ah, why? I'm not sure if it was electro pop, but I think so. I have to, I have to, um, you know, check it again. You know, my, when, when, I, when I was a child, I was still living with my parents and my mom always said that video game music is uh, Katzengejammer. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I looked <laughs> up, someday I looked up, what does that mean in the English dictionary? And it says beep plop. Oh, what? And it really? was like, yeah, I was like, well, that's fitting. That's <laughs> yeah. beep plop. That's oh my fitting. God, I didn't know that. That's, that's cool. That's a fitting translation. Yeah. So that's a cool, cool album name then for a beeper music album. Beep plop. Like, call yeah. It, yeah, just call it Katzengejammer and everybody who tries to translate it will have actually a good name for it. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Translating sometimes is fun, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, if you would really if you would really translate it, it would be cats, cats cry crying. No. Uh, not... Howling, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's that's crazy. That's such a um, weird translation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Let's stop the recording.